Other than the fact that all the films are united by the fact they all tell queer stories in some way, I mean, the films are hugely diverse. They're hugely different in terms of content, in terms of tone, in terms of style. So there's not really a specific flair film, but I think that all of them are united by this desire to kind of push what we understand by queer cinema. Something that's really exciting for us this year is that we're doing a kind of focus on disability. So we're doing quite a few films that deal with disabled people, deal with deaf people, deal with chronically ill people. And I think it's something that we don't always see represented on screen, particularly not in queer cinema. Um, we have a film called Love Scott, which is a really extraordinary Canadian documentary about a young man who was subject to a homophobic attack and was left in a wheelchair. And it's about the kind of year following the attack and him adjusting to his new life and making sense of what happened to him. Do you feel any kind of pressure as a programmer of a gay and lesbian film festival to make it a political event? Does it have to be a political event? I think it's inherently a political event. I think just putting on something like this is political. I think, you know, we have films that are directly engaged with politics and films which feel more lightweight or more kind of just, um, you know, crowd-pleasing, enjoyable films. But I think the nature of the festival will always be political. These films deal with so many different lives, they deal with so many different people, they deal with so many different ideas that, that politics is kind of inherent to the foundations of what we do at the festival. We have films that engage directly with politics and films which don't, but I think even those which, which don't are important stories to tell and I think that politics is very much at the forefront of the festival and I think it's a really kind of progressive act just putting on the, the festival itself. It always interests me when you have a festival that runs this long. Do you have festival regulars? And is there anybody you wanted to give a shout out to? <laughs> oh, we have millions of festival regulars. I mean, the thing, the great thing about Flair for me is the audiences and how dedicated they are. You know, the, the festival itself, when it happens every spring and it's like the BFI South Bank turns into the best gay venue in the world. It's absolutely incredible. And it's like a family. It's like a family gathering and you see the same people that you know and these same people come, but also we want to welcome new people, new family members into this kind of big uh, flair family that we have. So it's something that feels very much a community event. The great thing about flair is that you could come to the festival, you could come to the South Bank and not even watch a film and feel part of the festival. Obviously you should watch a film, but we have free events happening as well during the festival. We have club nights, we have talks. So it's important for us that it, we create a welcoming space for people even if they can't afford to buy tickets for the film. Are there any other titles that you want to uh, highlight for us? Um, yes, yeah, so our centrepiece screening this year is a really amazing documentary called A Deal With The Universe, which is directed by Jason Barker, who's actually a former festival programmer. Um, and the film charts his journey getting pregnant and, and having his, his first baby. And it's extraordinary because it's made up of home video footage that he shot over the course of kind of 10, 15 years. And what starts off as a, um, a kind of document of charting this kind of pregnancy brings in so many different things, brings in ideas about Jason as a trans man transitioning, attitudes to that, medical advancements, the very nature of kind of pregnancy itself, the relationship with his partner who battles cancer at some point. You know, it takes on so many different ideas and themes, but it's an incredibly personal piece of work. The clinic had suggested the possibility of using donor eggs. We said, well, what about my eggs? They said they'd have to put that to their ethics committee. The ethics committee said no. They said they didn't feel that gender swapping was conducive to the welfare of a child. We were devastated. Another one of my favourites this year is a film called Bex. Um, which stars um, Lena Hall, who's a kind of Broadway star, and um, she plays a singer-songwriter who, following kind of breakup with her girlfriend, is forced to move in with her slightly conservative mother in the small town that she grew up in. And when she's there, she starts her relationship with a, uh, a married woman who's uh, in a kind of slightly unhappy marriage, and a relationship between these two women blossoms. Um, it's one of my favourites in the festival because Lena Hall is such an extraordinary central figure. She's so charismatic and so engaging. And I think it's one of those films that, on paper, you might think, ah, I've kind of seen that before. You know, it's a familiar kind of narrative sometimes with 
within within queer cinema but it does something different with it it's got such warmth and such energy and I think it's one of those films that is very easy to watch it's a kind of effortless film but it really stays with you I am single and I'm broke and I'm back home living with my mom oh no why don't you play here okay Thank you so much for coming out. Now I know how Beyonce feels. Beyonce still lives with her mom, right? I'm gonna end with a tricky question. Um, what's your weirdest memory from Flares in years past? Oh, my weirdest memory um, would probably be years and years ago when I started on the festival, I was a kind of program guest assistant. And um, in one of my first years, um, RuPaul came over for the festival for Star Booty. Who remembers that film? <laughs> and um, and I hadn't quite anticipated what it meant to have RuPaul at the, the festival. I was pretty new <laughs> yeah. to this whole thing. And so I'd booked some little cab for, for Ru to, to take from the hotel to here and, and was then told that Ru would be in, in full drag and, and wouldn't fit <laughs> into a cab. So it was a last minute scramble to find some kind of other transportation to, to get them here. And suffice to say I did, but it was possibly the most stressful hour of my life. <laughs> So start your engines, but not in a tiny taxi, preferably.